Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we've got Landon here with his 20 year old Nissan. See you there. Hi. Okay. I'm Landon. This is my 2006 350Z with a bit of a misfiring VQ under the hood or something like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into this. Uh, wh what are you running? Hood, bumper, fenders, whatnot. So again, 06 350Z. It's got a Sabon carbon hood, uh, OEM Nismo V3 bumper on it. We're running just some depot headlights. Um, we got a set of fly one fenders on it. Yep, carbon fiber as you can yep, see. Yep, got the right carbon here. inserts and everything there on the fenders. Um, running down the side, just a pretty cheap set. I think Vicrez makes the side skirts. They're like kind of junk, but they look, look nice. They, they fit with the Look bumper. better than stock. Look real good, yeah. So, and then running down the body lines, I mean, we've just got little things like hints of carbon, carbon mirror covers, the carbon duct bill, um, street aero diffuser on the back. I'm sure we'll get there with the camera, but. Yeah. <laughs> what are we running? Wheels, tires, suspension? So these are a set of Volk SF Challenges. One of my dream wheels. One of these wheels for a long time. Finally found a set on Marketplace. Picked them up really cheap. They were a nasty gold color. Ended up getting them repowder coated bronze in the faces, brushed the barrels. Turned out really good. Um, otherwise, suspension set up, we're on BC coilovers and pretty much every SPL part you can buy for this car. Yeah, Front control arms, everything, everything like that. A lot of Z1 parts as well on there. So suspension is pretty dialed. Yeah. Definitely sure. set it up to be more of like a road race type car. Hi, welcome to my office. Um, running a set of Corvo seats. Can't remember the exact model off the top of my head, but we're running Corvo seats and harnesses as well on both sides. Sparco wheel, um, strike fast shifter, uh, good old fashioned harness bar. There's not really a lot going on in the interior. Overall, it's pretty stock, but just little aesthetic things that I liked and something to keep you planted as a driver whenever you're ripping this thing through back roads or whatever you want to do. All right, tell me a little bit what you got going on here in the back of the car. I see some fancy diffusers and exhaust stuff. What yes, you got sir. going on? So we've got just a pretty basic street arrow set up on the diffuser, um, bolted right up. Exhaust wise for the car, pretty much just running three inch straight pipe all the way back. There's a few resonators in there just to kind of tone things down a little bit. And then coming back, I ended up fitting a original Nismo muffler. I can't remember the exact model of it, but original muffler for this car. So it ended up sounding really good. In the exhaust, I also have cutouts that are basically a header dump. So we can go straight from oh, yeah. pretty quiet Nismo muffler. loud as you can possibly be. All the bald dump. eagles. <laughs> All the bald eagles. So otherwise, um, sequential tails, or as far as the turn signals and everything go, uh, carbon duct bill, bone stock tail lights, everything else like that. So nothing too fancy, but just enough to get the job done and make it look a lot nicer, kind of carry the theme of the car all the way through. Absolutely. All right, let's take a little look-see at what's going on under this hood here, buddy. Hey, pop the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Works for me. I'll let you open it. I don't want to, I don't want to butcher the old, all the right. old catch. All right, I'll do my best. I'll probably butcher it myself. <laughs> there you go. All right, tell me about what we got going on in here, man. It doesn't look like a VQ to me. No, it's not quite a VQ. Sometimes <laughs> I tell people it's a VQ with a different intake, but it doesn't really work very yeah, well. <laughs> um, so pretty much, it's it's a really stock setup. It is an LS1 out of an 04 GTO. So pretty well, just bone stock 5.7 there. Um, stock rods and pistons, but pretty healthy Texas speed cam. 
and some Gen 4 799 heads. Um, like I said, pretty basic motor setup overall. I, when I swapped it, I ran the full Sicky swap kit, wiring specialties harness. Um, it's running on a just factory 01 Camaro, I think, ECU. So it's, like I said, pretty basic setup. Running a CD trans with a Sicky adapter plate, Sicky motor mounts, yeah. everything like that. I mean, yeah. their kit is really comprehensive, covers everything. Mm -hmm. So shoves the trans back about six inches. That was kind of the purpose of the strike fast shifter is it was able to shifter, it was a shifter relocation kit. So it was able to move it forward and also add the short shifter in there as well. So, yep, otherwise, pretty simple setup. Holly, just sniper, 85 millimeter throttle body. Um, pretty simple, yeah. There's not really any other notable parts on it other than just everything to make it work. Yeah. So, car runs fantastic. One of the big pros of the wiring specialties harness was I was able to make all my factory gauges work, oil pressure gauge, coolant temp sensor, everything. Car is plumbed for AC. There's a leak somewhere that I haven't been able to find though. So yeah. it's just one of those we'll things. We'll have AC though. We'll have it's AC so one important. of these yeah. days once I get around to it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. But it's not real great to get to. But yeah, everything works pretty well as it should from factory. The only thing you notice is a check engine light. And that's, I'm sure, because yeah. the car's kind of confused <laughs> there. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Doesn't yeah, really know what's going right on. Engine. Uh, I checked on it. It's not right. Yeah, but. not quite right. <laughs> but overall, yeah, I spent about two and a half months, I think, start to finish from the day I parked this car, started pulling the motor until the car first started up and was going headed to the dyno. So it was a really quick build, rushed build, but over the past two years, I think, since it's been swapped, I've been able to kind of refine a lot of the little weird things or the things that I rushed. So it's turned out pretty slick and the car has been insanely reliable. I mean, you guys live an hour and a half from me and I drive down here almost every weekend and hardly ever have any hiccups, so. Now I know everybody's wondering, what kind of power you got in this? So on a Mustang dyno, I think it made right at about 380 uh, horsepower, 380 torque, yeah, right that's, to the wheels. That's to the tire, yeah. Yeah, exactly, to the rear tire. So I mean, People argue correction rates and everything like that. I generally just say it's right about 400 wheel. Um, good healthy number. And for as simple of a motor setup as it is and as cheap as a motor setup as this ended up being, it makes incredible power and a oh, lot yeah. of torque. It's and a lot of fun reliable. to drive. And so, like you say, yeah, yeah it's reliable. <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to drive. Get in it every time I turn the key, it, it just fires right up. It starts right up, yeah. Yep, I mean, it's set for I think a month and a half, it's just been too hot without AC to drive yeah. this thing. <laughs> yeah. Except for about a month and a half, fired her up yesterday and drove right down here, no issues at all. So, yep. yeah, it's turned out great. It was a really, it's a great running car. And one of those things is just the reliability of an LS as opposed to something along the lines of a rev up VQ like it was in this car before. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely worlds above it, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so now we're probably gonna go take this thing for a ride and. See what it does on the street, I guess. See if we can't break it. Yeah. <laughs> Like we said earlier, this thing's sitting right at about 400 horsepower, maybe just a little bit less. Um, but it, it definitely definitely likes the back roads. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it likes the rip, for sure. Yeah, we set up the suspension, I mean, to be able to carve back roads. It's got a really good power curve for that. I mean, a lot of torque, you've got almost instant power everywhere in the RPM range. So it's a lot of fun just to cruise as a street car, take back roads, and you know, have a good time. Nothing crazy, but a lot of usable fun power that you can just flat out enjoy. Yeah. One thing is, it's definitely NA. You are not waiting on any boost. Nope. It's immediate. Zero lag, no matter what you're doing. It is immediate. Your time. That's one thing that was a big deal for me about swapping to a V8 was the V8 torque and having that instant power curve. 
definitely, definitely worth it. Yeah, and I think you were telling me earlier, you, you put, you actually put the engine and trans together and then threw it back into the car. Yeah, that was really the only feasible way to do everything. So the engine and trans went in together. I had the core support off the front and everything, the whole front end of the car torn apart. So I just kind of had a straight shot to be able to shoot the motor and trans back into the transmission tunnel just because of how tight everything is. Putting it together after the fact wasn't really something that I wanted to try to do. Right. Now, uh, have you had any issues to where you'd have to do like trim, some maintenance on the transmission or, or any transmission issues? Drew's just calling me out here right now. He is trying to get me completely in trouble. So, in our last clip, we were talking about how reliable the car was and how we haven't had any issues, how I haven't had any issues out of it. Um, about five minutes later, after the last clip we filmed, uh, one of my pressure plate bolts decided to bag its way out because some moron who put it together, it was me, uh, <laughs> didn't use Loctite on his pressure plate bolts. And yeah, one of those decided to come loose, lost himself between the starter, the flywheel, and the block, and uh, thought we locked the motor up while we were trying to go get some drone shots and fun stuff. But ended up just being that bolt, we were able to pull the transmission, Put new, all new ARP pressure plate bolts in, retorque it all, Loctite this go around, and it's been really good ever since. But that is something I never want to have to do again in my life: is drop the transmission from this car without pulling the motor. <laughs> One of the worst experiences doing anything mechanically I have ever had. Yeah. the car I think we were talking about you've had the car for five years now uh, so you bought it when you were 18 and then and then just continued to modify it um, eventually put the LS obviously but basically the whole car it's 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 been gone through and pretty much pretty much upgraded in, in every way yeah it definitely has and that's been the fun part is I bought this car summer after my senior year of high school I had seen this car for about two years sitting in a parking lot and wanted it ever since my parents would never let me pull the trigger and buy it. So, finally, when I turned 18, graduated high school, I was able to actually go buy this specific car that I had been looking at for so long. And started there when it came to, I mean, first thing I did, I think, was throw a cold air intake on the motor. And yeah. just little stuff like that. And then bought coilovers, wheels, all those fun things. And it slowly just kind of turned into an addiction. And yep. the car now is, just like I said before, a totally different car, top to bottom. And I think my favorite thing about it is the fact that I have built every last bit of it myself. Every nut and bolt on the car was me. Aside from doing paint body work for like the bumper, side skirts, etc., everything on the car is my doing. Yeah. And so that's kind of the coolest thing about this car to me is I built it with my own two hands, with my own money, and I know it frontwards, backwards. You no, know, pretty Side much base, everything about every the car. Nut and bolt on every, the car. every nut. Oh my goodness. And definitely makes things like fixing transmission issues, even though it was not fun, a lot easier. It's not something that somebody else built and I turn around and bought. And that's something that's super rewarding. Oh yeah. And just knowing that you've built something that nobody else has, has, at least around here where we live and like seeing that we're in. Sorry, having some fifth gear synchro issues. Yeah, of course. Good old CD things. Yeah. Um, but that's something that nobody else around here 
in our local scene has really done with this chassis or anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of people that hate on Zs and rightfully so, honestly. <laughs> and that's kind of what makes my car so special to me is that it's a very different build and a very different approach to a 350Z than you see 99% of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the, the paint and body work um, and the, the, the wide wide fender flares not necessarily wide body but uh it, it's been it's been quite the journey just to kind of watch i've only known landon i think for maybe a year and a half two years maybe something like, something that. like that and just just in that amount of time it's been cool to watch the uh the growth of it it already had the ls whenever i met him um yeah, but that was kind of my big i think introduction into the car scene where we are in springfield i think once I got the car, actually motor swapped is when I started meeting a lot of new people, started going out to meets a lot more, and things yeah, like that. Yeah. And that's when Drew and I met, and Ethan and I met. Ethan and I knew each other beforehand, but I was kind of in the process of the swap already. So that was, it was a big game changer. I was able to meet a lot of people, really cool people, good people, and make a lot of friends and a lot of memories. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, I think that's just one thing about the car scene in general that I love is stuff like this, you know, yeah. admiring everyone's builds, and whether they're good or not, <laughs> you know, you see some of both, but being able to teach people who don't know as much, and then learn from people who know way more than you. Yeah, or, or just get help on a, on a random weekend where you need to drop the transmission or something, exactly. you know. I mean, Ethan and Drew helped me with that process, and that was one thing that I couldn't have done by myself, and not without having a place to store the car, without having to We're, we're real grateful for Landon just for showing us the car and just kind of sharing the sharing the joy of, of modifying cars and making things perform better, uh, but basically in all aspect aspects of the car. And we're 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 happy that we got to go out today, do a few a, pulls. It was a really good time. We got to get some really cool drone shots and all sorts of fun stuff, and really just drive the car how I built it to be driven. Yeah. 